Hey friend, welcome back to my channel all about design and research. My name is Femke and today I want to show you a design tool that I use at the very beginning and early stages of my design process to create flows and wireframes and it's called Whimsical. This video is not sponsored. I genuinely do use this tool and love it and we have a team license in my team. And I wanted to show you a little bit about what this tool does and how you could maybe think about integrating it into your design process. Let's take a look at their website. So these are the four areas that Whimsical is really, really good at. If you want to create flowcharts, I find this really helpful when I'm just trying to create user flows and journey maps, not necessarily designs yet. Wireframes, they have a really neat drag and drop tool for this. I'll show you in a moment. Sticky notes, I find this really helpful when I'm doing like team retros or things like that. And then I haven't used the mind maps, but it does look really, really helpful if that's something that you do in your design process. So when you log in, you will get two sort of demo template files that you can use. They do count towards your free usage, which I think is four boards, but you can edit them as you want. So they don't, they don't take up or waste space. So let's create one and I'll kind of show you how this works. So let's create a flowchart here, test flowchart. So this file is now set up to create flowcharts. So now if I want to add a shape, I can choose from any kind of shape. Let's just do a rectangle for now. And then what you'll see here is these really, really cool arrows around the shape, which easily lets you build and create flows. I've spent so much time in Figma, like manually creating boxes and like drawing arrows between them. And you know, it can be a super nightmare. So let's add this connector to another thing here. And you will now notice that if I actually move this shape, the arrow will flex and adjust to wherever I'm putting it, which, saves me so much time. You can also like branch off, like maybe you have little decision trees. Um, yeah, I just find like it's so quick and easy to build flows here with this that I never do this in Figma anymore. I always just come straight to Whimsical if I know that I just need to build out a basic user flow. Now they do have commenting features. So if you're working on this with your team, you can actually leave a comment here by selecting it and like leaving your comment. Other team members can see those and like reply. You can resolve them very Figma like, which is really nice. You can also share this. Maybe you want to share it with someone in your team so you can get a link to share it with them. Now this board has been set up for flowcharts, but let's say now I want to do a wireframe up here. I can actually switch the mode to wireframe mode and now I can build wireframes in this file. So they have a lot of templates. If I want to put in an iPhone here, it's exactly the right dimensions. If I'm working for web, then I can put in a window for desktop as well. And then within these frames, I can start like building things straight away. So maybe I want a keyboard. You can also change the orientation if that is something that you need to do. So what I often do when I'm really early in the design phase, I don't want to get like too high fidelity with my designs. I'm just exploring a few different options or maybe I don't want like others to get distracted on the fidelity level of the designs. I just want to talk about functional flows. I will use this to create some of those flows. So I'll remove the keyboard here. Now you can actually like add elements into this design. So like maybe I want a placeholder for an image Maybe I then want like a button to go here at the bottom. Live designing is always lots of pressure. <laughs> text input with some placeholder text. And these are slightly customizable. So you don't get as much control as Figma where you're actually, you know, can create full on high fidelity designs. You are kind of limited to the elements and the templates they give you, but there is a little bit of customization. So I can actually change the color of this button if I wanted to. I can also change the state of it, which is kind of cool to be able to switch and flick between states. Uh, I can like make it a link button or like outline, fill, etc. changing the size. So, you know, you don't have like, I don't have full control here of like how high I want this button to be. But honestly, if I'm just doing this for like, wireframing super early stage, this is like not going to be the final design, then it doesn't bother me too much that I don't have that control. So some of the other modes they have, like I mentioned sticky notes. So I often use this if I'm like doing retros. So for example, I might create like a collection here of like what went well. And then my team members can actually add sticky notes in here and they can like type this thing went really well. 
I believe you can also, yeah, I can open this and then I could add like an extra description here if I wanted to. Other people can comment. Uh, I can change the color, etc. I could assign it to somebody if I wanted to. So I'm, I'm not in a team plan right now showing you this environment, but if you were in a team plan, you could actually search for your colleagues and assign that to them if you wanted to. So you could almost use this like Trello, like Kanban style. Um, I've mostly just used it for like collecting feedback from the team or, or doing retros, but you could use it for a lot of different things. You can have multiple stacks here. So like I'd also have a stack for like to improve and then you can add cards there as well, change color, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So super easy, like drag and drop style. I don't know if you noticed, but everything kind of like clicks to place, which is really nice. I don't have to like make sure that this like red card is like super like center aligned. Everything kind of snaps, which is really, really nice and just makes it like super easy to use. So the last mode is the mind mapping mode. Again, I haven't really used this one, um, but similar to the flows, you can kind of build mind maps here. Again, you can do decision trees, things like that, uh, and build out whole full on mind maps, which might be helpful if you're like trying to create like user journeys or maybe you're trying to reflect some of the research and the like thinking of the participants that you might have interviewed. So one of the cool thing I want to show you, which I think is really neat because I'm a nerdy designer, is that in the library you can like create uh, themes. So this is the default theme which I've been using, but I also created a theme like with my own uh, brand colors. So you can like add colors here and you can edit them like name them how you like and you can sort of like apply this theme to your files that you have so back to my board here if i wanted to i can up the top right here edit my theme and then switch this to my femca.design one and save that and it will kind of update to reflect my own like brand theme which is really cool so if you really wanted to you could go in here and update the theme to reflect the the brand of the company that you're working for not like a necessary feature, but as a designer, it's nice to have. So back here at the top level, you can create folders. So I've created a folder here and I could actually move some of the files that I have into this folder if I wanted to. And that can just be a really helpful way to like, you know, categorize within your organization. If you have different teams or different projects going on, um, you can just easily organize that. So that is whimsical. As mentioned, I mostly use this at the very beginning of my design process. Maybe I'm just trying to like build out some functional flows or do some wireframes. This is a really helpful tool that lets me very quickly drag and drop and quickly iterate on these kinds of things without having to worry about doing it in Figma. And I also use it often at the end as well. Like I showed you, I use it for retros and things like that, or like getting feedback from, from team members. Uh, it can be useful at the end of a design process phase as well. If you love talking about design tools and want to talk more with me about wireframing, functional flows, that very early stage of your design process, then you can always book time with me on Superpair. We can have a one-to-one -one call there and talk all about this kind of stuff. So whimsical, go and give it a try. Would love to hear if it's helpful for you in your design process, or maybe you're using a different tool. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear and chat more about these kinds of tools. Catch you in another video. Bye.